Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. I'm Jeremy Lesniak, and on today's episode, we're going to talk about the 30 Days of Martial Arts Challenge. If you're new to the show, you might want to head on over to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com and see all of the other episodes that we've got. We release twice a week. On Mondays, we put out an interview episode with someone who just has a great story to tell. They could be a famous black belt. They could be from pretty much any martial arts discipline you could think of. Or they could be the exact type of person that you find in your martial arts school who has dedicated themselves to their martial arts, to making their world a better place. And then on Thursdays, we release some kind of topic episode. You know, today we're going to talk about the 30 Days of Martial Arts Challenge. Sometimes we do a profile of a famous figure from history. Sometimes it's a topic that I just need to get off my chest. Sometimes it's Q&As. I like those Thursday episodes. They're a bit shorter, but they're dense. They're fun. I, I like putting those together. Now today, we're actually joined by a guest for this topic. Sensei Rob Damashuk was back with us on episode 245 to talk about him and to talk about what he did with his 30 Days of Karate Challenge. But now, it's been expanded, there's a website, and really, he's looking to get as many people to participate in this as possible. It's not for charity, it's not for anybody's benefit, other than your own. And it's that selflessness that was so important to me in bringing him back on the show. I won't ramble anymore. Let's welcome him. Sensei Rob, welcome back to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Well, thanks, Jeremy. It's great to be back. It is great to have you back. And listeners, if you remember Sensei Rob, we brought him on for a pretty specific purpose. And well, guess what? He's back for effect effectively the, the same purpose. We've got you back on for the same reason, but this time, instead of looking to the past, we're looking to the future. And I'm being cryptic, and I'm being cryptic intentionally because I don't want to steal any of your thunder. Tell the listeners, what what was it we brought you on for before, and why is that appropriate to bring you on again? Because this time around, we are talking about 30 days of karate once more, Jeremy. Last time when I was on the show, we talked about how I had done this, this challenge, kind of this personal challenge. A few people had joined in. We talked the, about what the plans were for the future, and I said, you know, April 1st is the perfect time to do the challenge once more. And for those of you who are listening after the show comes out, April 1st is only going to be a couple of days away, so enough time for everybody to plan to join in on 30 days of karate or 30 days of any martial art. Yeah, so mm -hmm. let's, let's go back. Let's talk mm -hmm. a little bit about what this was. And listeners, you know, we're going to link to the show notes. Uh, to the, we're going to link in the show notes, rather, to the previous episode when Sensei Rob came on. So you can go back, you can hear that conversation. We're not going to go as deep today on that because really today is about what is coming, how you can participate, why you should be excited for this challenge, and a bunch of other stuff that we're going to get into. But, you know, for, for folks that are listening right now, we don't want to make them stop listening and go listen to that episode and then come back. So give us a summary of where this came from and what you did. All right. So about a year ago, actually, it really was about a year ago, I decided one night I was going to go out and just do uh, some training in my backyard. It's a beautiful spring evening my kids had gone to bed and it felt great so i thought no i'm gonna do it again the next night and the next thing i thought oh you know what this is the start of some kind of challenge so i thought no I'm, I'm gonna do 30 days of this and i gave myself the uh the challenge of doing one hour of karate because that, that was a push for me i i could do 10 15 minutes every day not a problem but one hour was going to be the real challenge so i decided right then and there that we're just gonna push through and it felt great there was challenges i learned a lot about myself and about um, how I can commit to to a short term program like this. My skills developed. It's like anything you do, some kind of practice and training every single day for thirty days. You're going to notice an improvement. I thought this was great, so I vowed in the fall I would do it again, and that's exactly what I did. I, it was last September, and that's when I started tagging uh, you because that's you know why not? And exactly. Well, <laughs> <laughs> like, you made the mistake of liking one of my pictures, and I thought, oh, okay, well, you know, serve you right. So I started tagging you and, and Whistlekick. And next thing I know, shortly afterwards, you say, hey, why don't you come on the show to talk about it? So we did that. And 
I think within the first 10, 15 minutes of, of the discussion, we realized, you know, this is going to happen again. Maybe Whistlekick would be a great vehicle to help promote this idea, among other ways. So I'm here to talk about the 30 days of karate again coming up in April and inviting all the listeners and their friends and their friends and so forth to join in. And let's make this thing a thing. Yeah. You know, there are a lot of months. I mean, if you you look at the calendar, if you look at, you know, some official list, because there is an official list. February is, you know, it's Black History Month and, and March is, you know, 10,000 things. And Fe- you know, February is all these things. Every month is all of these things. Why, well, why April? Why can't April be 30 days of martial arts training? You know, I, I, I would love to know why April, but... You know, I just kind of want the listeners to understand that this is an attempt by Sensei Rob that, that we at Whistlekick are supporting, because it's great to, on a short-term basis, get everybody to step up their training and really just kind of embrace this part of who you are that we all share as martial artists. So, yeah, let, let's go back. Why April? Two reasons. Number one, random choice. Second reason, you know, I'm, I'm here in Chicagoland and March, it's still a little bit cold. I, I don't want to be outside too often. April is usually fairly nice, fairly predictable weather. There's 30 days in April, 30 days in karate makes the math a little bit easier because I'm not a math guy. So April just seemed like a good time. Plus, I've been cooped up inside the house for so long. The chance to go outside, even if it's a bit chilly for half an hour, 45 minutes to an hour, whatever, just the chance to spend that much time outside after being stuck in the house all winter was a great time just to get out. So no deep philosophical reasons other than it's a chance to escape and why not? And of course, even though this challenge is starting on April 1st, this is not a joke. This isn't some (laughs) bizarre April Fool's thing where we're going to show up at everyone's houses or dojos or wherever you train and take pictures of you and say, ha ha, you're silly. Or are we? No, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> we do not have that kind of budget at Whistlekick yet. Uh, at the point where we did, we would probably use it on better things. But Exactly. You know, there's, there's no reason that the training that you do on April 1st can't be silly. In fact, when we talk about this 30 days challenge, every day doesn't have to be the same, right? We're not talking about you, know, you doing something monotonous every day for 30 days. I can't imagine anything more boring, truth be told, of doing the exact same thing for 30 straight days. I'm doing karate for 30 days, and that in covers so much. So for me, there is going to be a focus on kata because that's one of the things I really need to focus on. Because it's, it's one of the areas that I, I've let slip. But it doesn't mean I'm going to do an hour of kata every day for 30 days. I'm going to choose one of the Pinon Haiyan series, and I'll practice that three or four times a day. But that's only five, ten minutes. I'll do some form of basics. I'm a big, big proponent of meditation, so every night's going to have five to ten minutes of meditation, a couple minutes at the end to uh, write my journal, because even though I do everything on Instagram, I'm going to take pictures, I'm going to tag it on Instagram, I'm going to invite the listeners who join in, to participate on Instagram. For me, if I write it, if I take pen and I put a pen on paper and write it down, it just seems a little more official and there's more accountability that you know I have to write my journal. But that leaves a whole bunch of space for kind of the other stuff, the the fun stuff that I I get to switch up. So there'll be some kabuto, there will be um, more self defense. I've I've got a friend, a couple of friends here in the area who have committed to doing the thirty days. We'll get together, and we'll we'll do some sparring. We'll do some, you know, one on one flow drills. It's it's almost endless there because there's so much we can do. Uh, and you no, know, to be honest, too, there's going to be days where doing a full hour for me is going to be a struggle. I, I may end up quitting after 30 minutes. But the rule for me is going to be push, push myself, push those boundaries just a little bit. And that's what I'm going to invite everybody else to do. And if I get to an hour, fantastic. There'll be days where it's going to be more than two hours. The days that I'm in the dojo, that's a two or three hour day. Great. But it's it's got to be fluid. You can't be rigid. And it's just got to be something that is a challenge, but something that is attainable, achievable, and at the end, not only is there that sense of accomplishment, you've had to have fun. So, yeah, 30 days of the exact same thing, no thanks. Mm. All right, so let's unpack that. A couple things that you're setting out as the framework, and the first one that I want to pull pull out is fun. If this is self-designed training, if you're 
setting out to do, you know, now for you, it's an hour, but it doesn't have to be an hour for everybody. No, no, no. It could be, it's, if you're used to training an hour a day on your own, well, you've already accomplished 20. it. There's right, yeah. right. There's no challenge there. You're looking to step it up. If the idea of doing an hour because of your attention span or logistics just doesn't work, you know, people could do 15, 20, 30 minutes, right? Yes. Yeah. There's the only rule that I'm going to ask people to follow is that whoever participates, let's just be supportive of each other, right? Whether you're doing karate or uh, kung fu, taekwondo, Krav Maga, whatever you're doing, we, let's just support each other. That's kind of the rule. Beyond there, it's just some guidelines. And the guidelines is take what you're doing now and just challenge and push yourself a little bit. Make make it a challenge, but make it attainable. Mm. And, and of if course, if you mistake, go for it. Yeah. And if it's fun, you're more likely to do it. Yeah. You know, one of the things that's harder challenging, it's there are going to be days where if I'm a couple times last time, um, I did, you know, a hundred hammer fists, I did a hundred blocks, I did a hundred of this as just part of some basics. And it's tough and your muscles hurt and you're, you know, trying to grin and bear it. But when you're done, it's still, again, that fun is part of the achievement. And the beauty of this, the, the thing that I like about it the most is how individualized it is. And that's something that as martial artists, we don't have a lot of opportunity. When we go to class, most of us in a traditional martial arts class are asked to do the same things, or at least similar things as everyone else in the class. If you were to raise your hand and ask your instructor, you know, I want to go spend 20 minutes doing this thing that's completely different from what you're doing in class, the the responses will range likely from uh, contempt to disciplinary, right? At least that's every school I've, I've been in mm-hmm. would be somewhere along that spectrum. So here's an opportunity for you to work on the things that you want to, whether it's the things that you struggle with the most and you don't get the time to train them the way that you want to in class, or just things that are enjoyable to you that you want to do more of, or anything in between and any combination thereof. Right. And this is an opportunity. Again, I'm going to do all my stuff through Instagram, but it's an opportunity for us to share and learn from each other as well. So one of my goals in, in the 30 days, something I hate doing, but I'm promising myself I'm going to do, and that's going to take more video of myself. Mm. Still, stills are fine, right? Because I can go outside and take you no know, 30 stills and choose the best one. And that presents one part of the story, but not the whole thing. So if we get enough people participating in this, I'm I'm promising that I'm going to post some videos and I'm going to look for honest, you know, polite, but honest critique. And even if something might be really well done, if there's someone who does say Wing Chun and says, hey, in my martial art, we adjust it a little bit this way. Try that. So that's another opportunity we never get in the dojo because we don't have this mixture of different martial arts uh, styles and schools all all communicating and in one place. Mm, exactly. When you went into this the first time, was there anything that you were afraid of? Anything that others listening might be concerned about? Probably whether or not I, I could do it. You know, that's the that's the real challenge. The first time you do anything is, you know, self-doubt starts to creep in a little bit. And am I am I going to really be able to finish 30 days? At the beginning, it seems 30 days is not that bad. And when you hit the middle, it's it's hard. But really, other than that, the um, the biggest concern I had was just making sure that I, I would come up with the time commitment and and uh, stick to it. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a little bit of concern when I was throwing some of my weapons around in the backyard that neighbors might get a little suspicious. But, you know, my neighbors all know me now. And they just I think they just roll their eyes and <laughs> look the other way. Like, oh, yeah, there's Rob again doing, doing this crazy stuff in the backyard. Um, if you're in an apartment complex, I might not just going into the back alley and, and whipping around some uh, nunchaku or, or a, a bow, but, you know, beyond that. So if we have people listening that are, well, I guess I, I, I will be pointed and, and kind of specific, are, are saying, I can't do this. I can't do this because I don't have the space. I don't do this. I can't do this because I, I don't have the time. What would you tell them? Oh, I forget who, who uh, said the quote, but whether you think you can or whether you think you can't, you'll prove yourself right. If you're kind of if, if you're looking for if you're looking for reasons why you can't do it, you'll be successful. So ask yourself why 
you'd say you can. If it's you don't have space, really, how much space do you need? I I've, I've got a small kitchen, and I'm I love to cook. And in my small kitchen, if I've got something on the stove and I've got a couple minutes, you now I'll, I'll get into a stance and I'll I'll throw some punches, do some blocks. I'll, I'll practice some of the movements from kata, just some of the turns and spins in this tight space. Because hey, if I fall and trip, I'm going to put my hands out to uh, to recover, and I may put my hand on a hot stove. So there's some you know real real concern there. You can find the space. As for time, frankly, we make time for the things we want. And if, you, if you're really telling yourself that you don't have time to be up for an extra 10 minutes, then that's fine. That's, that's your choice. But that's a choice. It's not really a can't. And if you, if you are saying, I want to do half an hour, but really, with my schedule, I can only do 10 minutes. If you can carve out that 10 minutes, then carve out 10 minutes and call it a success instead of trying to carve out 30 and calling it a failure. Right. So like whether you can or you can't, you'll prove yourself right. And our priorities are reflected in the way that we spend our time. Even 10 minutes a day will amount to five extra hours of training over the course of that month. And as you said at the beginning, you're going to get better from this. There is a tangible benefit. If you're attending martial arts classes to get better, at least if that's somewhere on your list of things that you're hoping for, this supports that. And I've found very few people who can't find 10 minutes in their day to do something. Exactly. And, you know, put it into perspective, right? Choose one of the kata from, from your school, if, if you're you know, a karate guy like me. How many times can you run through a kata in 10 minutes? We're, we're taking a break and thinking, okay, what, what can I do better next time around? You can probably do it four or five times. If you do the same kata four or five times a day, even for just one week, try for the first seven days. How much is that one kata going to improve? So there's, it's amazing how incremental improvements uh, are, but it doesn't take much to, to begin. Mm. Great point. And I think the one thing that I want to add, because 10 minutes is a, can, can be a long period of time or a short period of time, depending on how you're using it. But I want people to keep in mind staying present. If you're going to make the time for this, if you're going to make this a priority, then you deserve to be present in that time. And for a lot of us, and I'm absolutely putting myself in this category, that's going to be the hardest part. I don't know that I'm going to find an hour every day. I'm not going to sit out for an hour every day because I know my lifestyle and I know how I feel when I don't accomplish goals. It's one of the reasons that Whistlekick has, has gone where it has, because if I say I'm going to do something, I do it. So my goals aren't going to be quite that high the first time maybe next year if this comes back around hopefully it comes back around you know i'll bump it up but my main focus is going to be staying present and letting go a a bit meditative Mm -hmm. as you alluded to the meditative meditation part and its importance for you that's my focus and let everything else go and you know i'm punching door frames or whatever i'm doing yeah and i really appreciate what you just said about that about being present jeremy because how easy it would it be to say, okay, well, you know what? Um, I got 10 minutes while the, my family finishes off their dinner, so I'm going to run outside. Well, you're not really thinking about what you're doing. You're spending 10 minutes wondering if they're getting upset with you and is at the house because you just scampered away from the dinner table. It's got to, yeah, it's got to be purposeful. It has to be intentional and it has to be your time. I mean, one of the greatest pleasures for me every week is I try to get to the dojo anywhere from half an hour to 45 minutes before my students arrive. And that's me time. Sometimes I'm just writing my journal. Sometimes I'm just setting everything up, getting it ready. But what that lets me do is kind of mentally deal with the day with whether it's issues at work or at home or whatever traffic, just getting there. That's my time. Then once, once that practice starts mentally, I'm there and the difference it makes in the quality of that training time where I can be focused on, on, on the task as opposed to having 20 different things flying through my head. So if you can do 10 minutes of that a day, do 10 minutes. If you can do 20, great. If you can do more, go for it. That's fantastic. But you're right. You have to be present. And I think that's a perfect way to say it. Well, I think we've covered everything that you and I talked about wanting to cover. Do you have anything else that you want to share with listeners before we get into some of the logistical stuff about tagging and, and all that? Yeah, I, I've got one. And there's actually a holdover from, from the first show because um, I was looking over the list of questions that you typically ask guests and 
I had all these answers. And there's one question that I didn't get asked that I was really disappointed. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> and well, there's two of them, really. So first of all, um, your favorite martial arts movie. Mm. Because everybody, I've looked, nobody has mentioned uh, Kurosawa and Seven Samurai on, on your show, at least going back all the episodes I can remember. So I, I just want to point out, if you haven't watched Seven Samurai, you are doing yourself a disservice. Yeah, it's a classic. Classic. Uh, forget about the, uh, the Magnificent Seven or whatever it is that they keep doing uh, cowboy remakes of here in the U.S., but you got to go for the original. Right. This, the second one was the, again, looking at all the martial artists uh, on, on film, all the movie stars that they got us into uh, the martial arts at some point. People talked, who were a little bit older than I am, how Chuck Norris was really kind of the guy, or Bruce Lee, Jean-Claude Van Damme. For me, it was Shokasugi. Mm. Those cheesy cheesy 1980s ninjas movies enter the ninja yeah. revenge of the ninja man i i went to town of those things we have so. talked about about him on the show and, and i'm gonna admit you know i don't know those movies uh, i'm a little bit younger than you i didn't have the opportunity to watch them but you know one of the things that we're we're looking at doing is you know really trying to put some weight into letting everyone know about all the amazing movies on Netflix. Cause I don't think everyone grasps how many martial arts movies are on Netflix. It's ridiculous. Oh, I know that's a rabbit hole. I go down on, on, on a weekend. Yeah. Yeah. You can get lost. You could do 30 days of bad martial arts movies on Netflix. Oh man. Yeah. E each day could be its own theme too. Yeah. There's, there's, there's a lot we could spider off from this, isn't there? There really is. I mean, there's, <laughs> I think the worst, because there's really, there's two types of, of martial arts movies, right? There's the best of the martial arts movies, and then there's the best of the worst martial arts movies. Mm. Like Bloodsport. It's a bad movie. But come on, it's Bloodsport. So but it's so good. Right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, without a doubt. Awesome. All right. Now, hopefully, everyone's excited. They're amped up on this, and they're saying, yeah, yeah you know, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to participate. Even if it's you know, a shorter period of time or, or, or whatever is going to work for you in your life in such a way that you can make martial arts a little bit more important for 30 days. How are they going to connect with the rest of the folks doing that? All right. So fortunately, since the last time we spoke, Jeremy, uh, Instagram did something or they added a feature, which is great for this. And as you can now follow hashtags, mm. which back in uh, September, I don't think they had introduced that yet. So. What I'm going to suggest, it's been 30 days of karate, and I'm still going to tag all my stuff as 30 days of karate for my own reasons. Um, it's going to be easier for me to follow. I've got uh, karate students who want to do the same thing, and that's kind of like a little sub group. But I'm going to use the hashtags of uh, 30 days of martial arts. And that way, I don't want anyone to feel like they're, they shouldn't participate because they're doing taekwondo or, or um, aikido or anything else. So take it 30 days of martial arts on instagram awesome. follow the hashtag and if you want to put a video put a video uh put up pictures of, of you doing stuff put up questions and let's the other thing too that i would love and a couple of your listeners jeremy reached out to me after the last show and oh cool i i can't express how how much i appreciate that and how how thrilled i was so i'm looking forward to to uh, those people participating because i captured their uh the contact information on, on that. So I'll, I'll be reaching out to them directly just to remind them April 1st. But yeah, so if you're not on Instagram, join. It's uh, 30 days of martial arts is the hashtag. Follow it. Let's comment. Let's help each other out. And let's see what happens on April 30th. And, you know, I mentioned one other idea to you um, at, at the end of, of April. And that is maybe we can find a couple of people who found the challenge somewhat transformative. And might want to write an article for marshalljournal.com. Hey, you know, that would be a lot of fun. And listeners, I don't want anyone that is is hearing this to think that you have to do this publicly. Oh, Look, yeah. yeah. If you're willing to take this challenge yourself, you don't need to tell a single person about it. We would love to hear about it. You know, if you want to email me directly, you know, Jeremy at whistlekick.com, we talk about that stuff. I'm, I'm always happy to hear feedback, but I don't want people to think that that's a requirement. And we're not going to, you know, if, if you're not comfortable putting up photos or video, maybe you just want to comment on, on what other people are doing. You know, any level of participation is great and welcomed because yeah. we're trying to start, I don't know if we want to call it a movement. Do we want to call it a movement? Let's call it a movement. Okay. We're trying to start a movement 
And a movement requires participation. Any degree of participation is greater than none. And that's how and movement happens. And if your participation at this first time around, especially if you're just new to the martial arts and, you know, you're a little, you're lacking some self-confidence and you're thinking, man, it's going to be filled with all these people doing great martial arts. And here I am as a white or yellow belt. No way. If all you want to do is just follow along and kind of check it out, just follow the hashtag. That's fine, too. I mean, that's we all start somewhere. So whatever you're comfortable with, start there. Cool. There we go. Since they're up, thanks for coming back on. Thanks for talking about this. And you know, I'll I'll, I'll see you yeah. on the on the digital waves as we tackle this challenge together. Absolutely. And uh, one one of these days, Jeremy, you and I will find uh, ourselves in the same room, and we'll be able to do some training together. But in the meantime, thanks so much for uh, providing this vehicle. I I never thought when I first did the challenge last year that it's going to even grow into this kind of thing. So the support of Whistlekick and, and you in in promoting this is just fantastic and i'm really excited to see what happens in april thank you sensei rob for coming back on the show for inviting the world to participate in this really unique thing that you've undertaken and i hope listeners out there i hope you will give it a shot remember it doesn't have to be anything monumental it doesn't have to be an hour a day if five minutes a day is what you have time and space for then do it you will be a better person a better martial artist simply for the discipline of undertaking this challenge. I'll be participating right alongside with you. And I'll admit, this is not going to be an hour a day for me. If you want to check out the show notes, you can find them at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. If you haven't yet checked out the wonderful products that we have at whistlekick.com, from shirts and hoodies to sparring gear to kicking paddles and a whole bunch of other stuff, Head on over there. Check that out. We would love to count you as one of our customers. That's all I've got. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.